everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance and today I'm going to show you how to make a pet bed out of scraps of fabric and maybe those fabrics that uh, we don't like anymore, that don't fit our taste. I'm going to show you how to upcycle these and to make a wonderful pet bed to donate to shelters. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can see I have quite a bit of this fabric. I think I got it on sale and I don't know, I probably bought it 10 years ago and at the time I, I had a project in mind and um, just over the years I've kept hold of it just because it is a good fabric and I had a lot of it, but it really isn't a fabric that I love. So I am going to make some pet beds out of this and I'll show you how I do that. So first I cut a piece of fabric approximately 20 or so inches wide by the width of the fabric. Uh, and this is gonna make a nice size bed. We're gonna gusset the corners, which I'll show you how to do, but it'll make a nice size bed for a pet. So the first thing you're gonna do after you cut and press your fabric is you're gonna fold it in half like this with the right sides together. And I'm gonna use this fold here at the bottom uh, as my, here, I'll turn that around so you can see that. Uh, the fold at the bottom, uh, I won't have to sew that seam then. This will just be the one end seam. So I just lined up the salvages, folded in half, and I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew down uh, each edge and across the top. When I get to the top though, I want to leave I'll put this so you can see it. I want to leave a space uh, for turning this and for then stuffing it. So let's get started. We will sew this now. So I am using black thread, uh, but it really doesn't matter. Again, it is, uh, it's not, doesn't have to be fancy. It's something we can donate. Uh, so use what you have, maybe even use up some of your other uh, threads and loose ends and stuff like that. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do a very wide uh, seam allowance and that's just to give it some strength and structure especially when we do the uh, gusseted corners so I'm actually gonna make a little thinner than that I'm gonna start it like that and I'm gonna start sewing I'm gonna back stitch to secure that when I get close to the edge I turn and I'm gonna sew in And that's where my opening is gonna be. Now you can see here I got a little off. That's okay, it's not gonna matter. to see because I did use matching thread but you can see I sewed around the outside and the next thing I'm gonna do is do a gusset on the corners okay so I'm just gonna take my ruler I have a small one here and I'm gonna lay it on the corner and I'm actually gonna do a three inch gusset it's gonna make it nice and thick for the pet and I'm gonna line my ruler up and just cut corners out. Now if you're more comfortable with this you can draw it and then cut it. Um, again I'm pretty comfortable doing it and I can just eyeball it and do it that way. And you're going to do this to all four corners. So I did that to all four corners like you can see here. Okay, so now I'm going to take these corners, open them up like this, line them up, and I'm going to sew from here to here. And that's going to give me a gusset. So let me see if I can show you that a little bit better. I'm going to sew this diagonal right here. Okay, so from here to here, and I'm going to do that on all four corners. The seam allowance doesn't matter, just be consistent. So here we go. So 
So now that my, all four of my corners are sewn in, you know what, I said gusseted, it's more of a box corner, I guess is what you'd call it. It doesn't have any uh, pleats in it, but I, I guess it's the same type of thing. It's just going to make it wider uh, and thicker, okay? So, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I'm going to turn it. I'm going to go to that hole that I made that I left open and didn't sew, and I'm going to reach in and try to find the furthest part from the hole and pull it through. That's the easiest way to turn anything. The rest will follow. And I'm going to push out those box corners. You can see them here. I'm going to do that to all four. Now you can press it if you want to. I'm not going to. It doesn't need it. Uh, and it's really a strange looking um, contraption or bag right now. It's very floppy and it doesn't quite look right, but it'll look better once we stuff it, which is what we're gonna do right now. So to stuff it, I have a big bin of scraps of just cutoffs. You can see actually some trimmings from this fabric and they're just small pieces of scraps that aren't really usable. I'm going to stuff them in this bag and I'll show you how we finish it. Okay, there's the opening and I'm gonna stuff all of this in here. Well, until it gets full enough, but not over full. So one mistake I made when I first started making these is I'd stuff them very, very, very full and they weren't comfortable. In fact, my parents' cat absolutely hated the bed that I made and it was because she just couldn't get comfortable on it. So you wanna make sure that they're not overly filled. Take a minute and just adjust your scraps in there. And you can also use just polyfill and then keep stuffing. Okay, it's not overly full at all. It's a nice consistency. You can see our gusseted corners made it nice and wide. So it's, it's a thick, pillow, but I don't want to overstuff it again because you know what? The animals just don't like it. They want something that they can scrunch down into and be comfortable in like this. Okay. So I am now going to close up this hole and sew it shut just with the machine and do a straight stitch. So that's it. That's how you make these wonderful pet beds. Like you, you can see, they are not very full. Uh, cats and dogs, I would think at least. I never tested it on a dog, but I would assume. But especially cats, they just don't like it if it's too overly full. So be cautious about that and make sure you make them so they are nice and soft and able to be squished and comfortable for the pet. So now I'm gonna get started making a few more for the local animal shelter so I can upcycle some of these fabrics that maybe I don't like and some of my scraps that I am no longer using. Thank you so much for joining me today for this tutorial. Uh, have a great day and please, if you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing and giving me that thumbs up. Uh, I hope you make some time to sew this week and have a wonderful day. Bye.